management of estrogen on testosterone replacement therapy and anabolic steroids. That's the title of today's video. I present this video to you because I see so much interest from men regarding their estrogen levels. Now, these are men that are all on testosterone and or steroids, of course, and they're interested for their estrogen levels. They tell it to my staff just all day. It's incredible. So, I, of course, being an expert in managing men on testosterone and getting men off steroids, I know a lot about this topic. So, I want to present this in a focused clinical manner. So, we're going to talk about this today, and I'm going to present what I know. It all starts off with biology. So men have testosterone and estrogen, and they're supposed to have a lot more testosterone than estrogen, about a 10 to 1 ratio, but that's actually very complicated. Aromatization is the process of how a man has his endogenous, not to mention exogenous testosterone, converting to estrogen. Now, that's the process, and in the end, there can be an abundance of estrogen built up, and it's mainly estradiol. So where does this take place in the body, in a man's body? In the adrenals, the testicles, the fat. So many men know that, that the fat tissue, men that are overweight, in theory, aromatize more. CNS in the brain, it, this, this occurs, this aromatization, if you will. Muscle and blood vessels. So that's where it happens. But what happens? What are they concerned for? Well, these are the clinical features. So let me present them to you how I see it in my clinic. The CNS, the brain. So men feel that their testosterone estrogen ratios are out of whack and usually obviously because they have more, too much estrogen from what they're doing and it's affecting their mood. They just don't feel well. Their libido, their emotion. This is very important. This is widely across the board that so many men will, will present this and complain and they come in with this as a complaint. The next piece is the gynecomastia. There's no question that because of aromatization, you're going to get different levels and degrees of gynecomastia. Next is the skin. Most skin issues on steroids and testosterone is from DHT, but there is a contribution from estradiol. There's no question. What else? Heart. It's more my concern initially, certainly, than the men, but sooner or later they become obviously concerned, and men that have heart, had heart attacks or have heart issues secondary to being on some of these medicines like aromatase inhibitors and it's hurt their heart, they certainly become very concerned. So that's important right there. Next I would say is the prostate, not to mention the central nervous system with sexual functions with testosterone to estrogen ratios. You have effects directly in the pelvic region and on the prostate. The prostate can enlarge. You can even get, there's concepts of why we have prostate cancer in men as they get older with, a, with a, a poor ratio of testosterone endogenous to estrogen. Again, this, this is controversial, but it needs to be presented. And then, of course, there's BPH, which is the enlargement of the prostate itself, and the sexual effects. You can't get away from the brain itself, and also there, there's um, angiogen receptors in the pelvis itself mainly in the corpus cavernosum, the testicles, and this whole pelvic region in the prostate. Next is the bones. We all know that androgens, in addition to estrogens, have effects on skeletal muscle and bones. So that's a big piece right there. Edema. So when men are using steroids, not to mention testosterone, they will complain of puffiness. Well, not just puffiness in the face, but lower ankle edema and puffiness. Now, why is that? Well, it has wide-reaching effects, and it's true. It's the estrogen component where there's aromatization going on, and it can cause hypertension, edema, overload of fluid, and that, in the end, can definitely affect the heart. So that's the clinical pieces. There it is. Now, let's move on to how does a doctor and how do I manage a man who's on testosterone for his estrogen. So and everything comes down to the initial visit and the history of present illness and what he's complaining about. And then you do 
uh, a history and a very good physical exam, labs and vital signs. You can see my other videos on all this. Now, the labs that are measured for estrogen are very particular. And there's a lot of controversy on this. You just don't measure every man at testosterone, not to mention steroids, all these different estrogens. Because what are you going to do with it in the end? What are you going to do with these issues? Very complicated. That's why it's man for man. But and, and to be full and to be very thorough for this video, total estrogen itself is, is a lab. It's called total estrogen. It's mainly estradiol. So that's estradiol by itself. And depending on what lab company you're working with, they'll just have what's called estradiol. But what method is it? There's an ultra-sensitive, and there's actually one called liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy run twice MSMS, and that's called a dilution method. So to be very thorough for you guys, that's what the labs are actually right there. You can order those. But you want to do, in my opinion, you want to keep an apple to an apple. So you want to look at total, always to total, or estrogen. I like to use, if I'm going to do it, either a total, and I eyeball the man, and I look at his clinical pieces, and I do it clinically. I mean, that's really takes, you have to really have an, an expert opinion. You have to really know how these affects and what the man's on and what his complaint is, how it's affecting all these issues, though. But again, you can look, you can measure this. There is, there is uh, it's important to do. That I feel, think is important to do. And at the end of the day, the management with these issues of estrogen for man testosterone or steroids is going to be case by case. The first piece I like to do is before using aromatase inhibitors or selective estrogen receptor modulators, which I do use, I just use them sparingly, and my patients know that. I try not to use them. We try first to microdose. Microdosing, although there's no data for any of this, there's no prospective longitudinal outcome, double-blinded, peer-reviewed studies. Unfortunately, there's not. But I have anecdotal, tons of anecdotal data, and I have great patient experiences that small doses of um, the ester of testosterone will really limit the conversion, the aromatization of testosterone that you're giving exogenously to estrogen. So right there, microdose, that's really the secret. The next piece is, yes, for a limited period of time and man per man, you can use aromatase inhibitors and selective estrogen receptor modulators. Let's talk about it. You want to use the lowest dose. You want to do it for a limited duration of time. You want to have a set point to monitor him and to watch him and to watch these issues and to just stop it. It's some, have an end point where you're not going to give the medicines. Just leaving him on the medicine without monitoring him and talking about it is, is not right because it, it, it can affect the heart in the end, it, uh, the bones. It, it's going to have an effect. It's going to have an effect, not to mention the brain. So other issues... Other techniques that I use apart from microdosing and very limited use of these medicines are going to be looking at other medicines where you're working around. You get the lowest dose of testosterone, you try to keep it to the lowest dose, you try to get all the other medicines off, them, not to mention steroids, and then you try to work with other doctors on the CNS and maybe depression, history, sexual, the, uh, the, the, the history of the skin and the acne. Again, the gynecomastia, get the surgery. Just go for the surgery. Really, go for the surgery. Use, use diet, exercise, behavioral therapy. There are supplements, other supplements, it's beyond the scope of today, that you can work on each piece of this, from the CNS, the skin, the heart, the gyno, the prostate, sex, bones, the edema. There's, there's many ways to get to this. But at the end of the day, I want to make it clear that microdosing is the most effective way and if you have to use these medicines, let's go over them now for the shortest period of time. Now, why is that? Because they have side effects. They have significant side effects. Aromatase inhibitors and selective estrogen receptor modulators. Let's hit them real quick. So the side effects of, of the AIs, if you will, or Arimidex, if you will, Letrosol. So CNS effects, they're going to affect the brain. Some guys want to be just balanced, and it is true that if you can just balance it just right with microdosing, getting off other drugs, uh, just discussing and working with psychiatrists about underlying depression and anxiety, modulating the, with these medicines very carefully can allow a man to feel well. There's no question. You've got to be careful. 
Other side effects with aromatase inhibitors, GI effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, even constipation, injury to tendons and muscles. You know, the aromatase inhibitors from the bodybuilding world, we've learned, can be very drying agents, and there could be tendon ruptures and musculoskeletal injury. Cardiovascular injury is the classic one, where these medicines we know will lower the HDL and could definitely cause heart issues. There's no question. I've seen heart attacks on men that have bad genetics, on some steroids, not any more or less than anyone else, and they're very young and they, have, they suffer a myocardial infarction. Why? It's a global effect and there's multiple things going on, but one contributing piece is they were living on aromatase inhibitors and their HDL was very low. For an example, less than 20, even in the single digits. Please pay attention. This is very complicated. Next piece is the selective estrogen receptor modulator side effects. It's tamoxifen or Nolvidex. Okay, there is going to be, again, CNS and depression effects. Very complicated modulating these drugs. So everyone knows this drug, tamoxifen, very careful with what it will do to the brain. A lot of men that are on steroids, they won't feel well on, on any of these serums at all, so just by themselves. Of course, used with a modality of weaning medicines, they can do well. But just using them by itself, and that's going to be Clomid, and that's really not for today on this. That's going to, this is tamoxifen. It affects the central nervous system. Next, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Again, GI effects. I've seen all this. Headaches. It's a classic. And then hair loss. And a lot of this is from the data from women that have been on these drugs for breast cancer treatment. DVT, deep venous thrombosis, a clot in the lower legs, most commonly, and they can go to a pulmonary embolus in, in the lungs. That's very dangerous. I've seen multiple men tell me, and I've seen it myself and in very limited cases, when I've even used some of these drugs for short periods, uh, that's why I'm watching so carefully, they have DVTs. You gotta be very careful. Any hormone manipulation, in my opinion, you gotta watch out for DVTs. So, that's the presentation. In the end of the day, managing men on androgens, including just simple testosterone, not to mention steroids, and looking at estrogen is very important to do so. It's important to pay attention on a case-by-case -case basis. I really hope this video is enjoyed and I hope it helps people. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.